The Yu-Gi-Oh! Misconception series, where we take a close look at misconceptions that even competitive players and judges have on card text, game mechanics, rulings, and policies. What's up, YouTube? I'm Vaughn, and today we are looking at the misconceptions of Inherent Summons. But before I begin, just a friendly reminder to definitely like and subscribe, especially that we are still doing the giveaway for the playset of Forbidden Droplets. So if you want a chance to win this playset, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Now, the reason why we're doing the misconception of Inherent Summons was because I definitely made a mistake on my last episode about the misconceptions of Necro Valley, and it was quickly corrected by Legacy Crusader about the Machina Fortress being able to special summon it from the graveyard while Necro Valley is on the field. So that ruling was actually incorrect. Definitely apologize for that because there is actually a big difference of effects that does not activate and also summoning conditions now when you look and you read this card you will assume that all of them are inherent summons which is actually correct they both do not start a chain but one is a summoning condition which is an infernoids which you can special summon from the graveyard of necro valley is on the field and the other one is an effect that doesn't activate which is machina fortress now it is very crucial to know because this actually opens up a lot of rulings and possibility situation that you might be in. But I definitely have to thank and give a shout out for Legacy Crusader for pointing this to my intention because one, I didn't even know this ruling. And I even had to ask a few judges about this and some of them wasn't even aware of it and we had to look into it and then finally found it and I was very surprised. So if you guys like specific decks and want to learn how to play them or play against them definitely check out his channel it's very entertaining and i actually do enjoy watching a lot of his videos and i learned a lot from it this is definitely a yugi tuber that knows his rulings so one thing to determine of cards that have inherent summons is definitely that the ones with the effects that don't activate and the ones that are summoning conditions. So one key way to really like look at it in a different perspective is besides Necro Valley, it negates the effect of Machina Fortress and that's why you cannot spell summon it. And while the Infernoids are summoning conditions and not actually effects, that's why it doesn't affect the Infernoids. Let's say Konami makes a brand new card. A card that literally negates monsters effects in hand. So not like Mind Drain, which prevents players from activating monster effects, but one that actually negate monsters effects in hand. So if that card exists, that means it would stop cards like Cyber Dragon and even Kaijus. But you would still be able to spell summon monsters like Black Lesser Soldier or even the Infernoids. So these are key things to know. Now, definitely Konami would never make a card like that because it would be impossible for it to work because one, there's no way to determine any of those cards in your hand are monsters or even affect monsters since it's all private knowledge. So we don't have to worry about that. But definitely these are specific situations that can actually occur. So it's definitely good to actually note. Now, there is definitely a lot of confusion when it comes to these type of monsters being inherent summons or being monsters that are affect activation. How do you determine a monster that has an effect that activates than a monster that has an effect that doesn't activate or a summoning condition. Well, one key thing is actually a semicolon. Usually, a monster with a semicolon usually have the condition, the cost, semicolon, and then the actual summoning of that monster. While cards that are just an effect that doesn't activate have no semicolon, and Monsters with summoning conditions can only be summoned in a specific way and only that specific way. And that what makes it a summon condition almost to the point that it's not even on the text. So one key thing to really take a look at is that sometimes cards actually seem to be a summoning condition, but in reality is a effect activation is if we take the Chaos Baby Dragons and Chaos Valkyrie, all of these monsters seem like summoning conditions. They all banish a light or dark and special summon themselves. But in reality, Chaos Valkyrie is actually a monster effect activation because you literally have to reveal it, pay the cost which is banish a light or dark, 
then semicolon special summon it from hand while the other ones of the baby dragon are just summoning conditions that you can only supposed to summon them in this specific way so definitely really reading into the card text you can determine which is which but i know a lot of these could be confusing especially if you're trying to respond to these type of cards so one of the, like the oldest rulings and debates has been with like solemn judgment so that you cannot solemn judgment a effect activation it has to be on the actual inherent summit of it but that is very not an accurate like depiction of it of like why it does not work i'll give you the best example of it is that let's say you activate a monster effect okay suppose summon himself that's the activation effect now as soon as that monster touches the field okay and that effect resolve you cannot do anything because once that effect resolved, that means that the summit was successful. That means it made contact to the field and you cannot play a card like Solemn Judgment because it would just not work if you could just play Solemn Judgment on cards that are successful. Usually when you play Solemn Judgment is to prevent the summoning con completely and it's not even successful of it. It's like if I normal summon Solomon Great Gazelle, use the effect to mill and now you want Solemn Judgment to negate the Summon. it's like you cannot because i'm using the effect that means already that the summoning was successful because on that activation is on the resolution of the summoning which actually point out on a lot of different plays that usually a lot of response always occur on the resolution of the summoning same thing with inherent summons if you're not negating the summon that means you are doing your plays on the resolution of the summoning so example of solomon great gazelle you activate the effect this is during the time of the resolution of the summoning. So you can still play cards like Bombless Trap Hole, even though it's not directly in a response to it. This is all happening at the time of the resolution of the summoning, and you could still respond cards like Bombless Trap Hole to it. And it could occur with all cards, especially with Inherent Summoning. And that is the misconception of Inherent Summons. Now, if you guys enjoyed today's video, you know what to do. Like and subscribe. And if you want a sneak peek of future products I'm planning to review on this channel, you can follow me on my Instagram, Vaughn Gear. I'm Vaughn, and this was the Misconception Series.